Our next presenter is Dr. Ronke Olabisi, who is a biomedical engineer. She's a, uh, a professor at Rutgers um, University in biomedical engineering department. And she's going to talk to us a bit about human adaptation in abnormal environments, that inconvenience about being human, and some of her work starting to look at bone and other things. Hello, and thank you. So uh, I'm going to be talking to you about adaptation to the abnormal environments, and particularly what I'll be talking about is adaptation to microgravity. So this is a human body in space, and there are a whole lot of changes that occur when you uh, remove gravity from the equation. Uh, you have a fluid shift. I know you can't read any of these, but I'll, I'll try to describe them. Um, and then this fluid shift causes changes in the muscles, in the legs. Um, you have neurovestibular alterations. The otoliths can't sense in, anymore, and so you don't have the same kind of balance. And so what winds up happening is that the eyes become the major way to sense motion and things like this. You have a loss of bone and muscles deteriorate. Uh, a, a whole variety of changes that happen, but what we're going to focus on is the, the loss of bone mass and the loss of muscle mass. And so demineralization results in about 1 to 2.7 percent bone loss per month, and uh, with mus muscle atrophy, you get about 2 percent muscle loss per week. And on Earth, the equivalent uh, model to this is bed rest. So someone who has suffered a... Uh, spinal cord injury or someone who has been confined to bed rest temporarily or long term will suffer very similar uh, losses like this. So by studying the microgravity case, we can also help people on Earth who suffer from these cases. So some of the effects of muscle atrophy, in addition to, we all know that when you muscle atrophy it gets smaller in size, uh, you also get a uh, smaller strength, but what people don't also realize is that you have decreased mobility, and this decreased mobility, um, it, it inc decreases your range of motion. And so in addition to weakness, you have a less functional arm because you can't go through, the, you can't lift the own, your own weight of your own arm. And so some of the countermeasures for this type of muscle loss, when it's due to microgravity, uh, you have resistive exercise. Now, if you're paralyzed or you're confined to bed rest, you can't always perform the resistive exercise. So one of the things that they've seen that is helpful is whole body vibration. Uh, nutrition, uh, some uh, recent research by researchers in France have found that resveratrol, or red wine, which... <laughs> Maybe if you're uh, confined to bed rest, you might want to uh, partake in, uh, has uh, reduced some of these effects of uh, muscle wasting. Now, amino acid supplementation has also been used in microgravity and with people at bed rest. Um, leucine in particular has been shown, but it seems to be less effective in women than in, in men. And uh, some antioxidants they're prescribing as well, and antiproteases and proteases are just... Uh, they dissolve proteins, and so they're trying to inhibit this. And uh, pharmaceutical agents as well have been shown to help, but, you know, in some cases it helps more in the animal model than in the human model. And so by manipulating certain growth factors, increasing some, decreasing others, uh, they've shown varying results in these countermeasures for muscle loss. Now, with bone, we're a little less familiar with bone, so I'm going to give a little bit tutorial on normal bone turnover. So at any time in your life, your bone is only 10 years old. doesn't matter if you're 90, if you're 50. At most, your bone is 10, and that's because you have a constant turnover of your bone. You're replacing it. So if you think of a, a bottle cap uh, soda, if you bend it back and forth and back and forth, eventually that breaks off. And so that would happen with your bone as well. And so your body turns that over to prevent that fatigue from happening. And so you have two different kinds of muscle cells that are primarily responsible for this. And this one is the osteoclast. And the osteoclast will go through and dissolve the bone. And the osteoblast will come in and replace the bone. And so with this turnover, you never have bone that is too old and, and brittle and broken, 
That's, that's the goal. Now, when you have microgravity, the problem is, is that the osteoblasts don't come in and do their job. And we have the same kind of situation when you have prolonged bed rest. And it's not quite sure, no one's quite sure what this mechanism is, why the osteoblasts aren't coming in to do their job. But this does result in the high bone loss that you see per month in people in microgravity or in bed rest. And uh, that rate is 10 times the rate of postmenopausal women who lose about 1 to 2% per year as opposed to per month. And it's, again, as I've said, comparable to the disuse from paralysis or bed rest. And what you wind up having is you can see that the bone matrix, it's kind of, it kind of looks like a sponge. Now, it's a hard sponge, but it's, you, you have about as much bone mass as you have pores in the normal bone matrix, which is the, the box on the left. But when you have long-term microgravity or osteoporosis, the box on the right, that's what you have, the pores are much, much larger. And so this is what we want to prevent. And so the ways that they're preventing this is instead of just having the osteoclasts come in and do their business, you have these bisphosphonates, and these are anti-resorptive <laughs> agents, and they prevent the osteoclasts from doing their job. And so with these anti-resorptive pharmaceuticals, you, and with exercise and with nutrition, they're seeing more and more benefits and less and less wasting of the bone. And so again, resveratrol has been shown to help with this as well. So. Um, maybe in the future they'll pack some red wine for the astronauts on, on board missions. And uh, one of the other nutritional countermeasures that's being investigated right now is a decrease in animal protein versus potassium ratio. And this will be also investigated with bed rest in people who are um, in microgravity environments. So in conclusion, the lessons that we get from bed rest will help with microgravity, and the lessons from space will help with bed rest in osteoporosis patients. And so ongoing research is needed for both groups, but especially with bone loss and muscle wasting, what you learn from one environment can always help you with what is going on in Earth. And so thank you. Thank you.